Welcome back to the Quantcast Industry Summit on the demise of third-party cookies, the cookie conundrum, a recipe for success. We're here with Peter Day, the CTO of Quantcast, and Shruti Kopkar, head of product marketing, Quantcast. Thanks for coming on, talking about the changing advertising landscape. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. So we've been hearing the story, obviously the big players want to keep the data, make that centralized, control all the leverage. And then you got the other end, you got the open internet that still wants to be free and valuable for everyone. Uh, what's, what are you guys doing to solve this problem? Because if cookies go away, what's going to happen there? How do people track things? You guys are in this business. First question, what is Quantcast's strategy to adapt to third party cookies going away? What's going to be, what's going to be the answer? Yeah, so uh, very rightly said, uh, John. Uh, the mission, the Quantcast mission is to champion a free and open internet. Uh, and with that in mind, our approach to this uh, world without third party cookies is really grounded in three fundamental things. Uh, first is industry standards. We think it's really important to participate and to work with organizations who are defining the standards that will guide the future of advertising. So with that in mind, we've been participating with IAB Tech Lab. We've been part of their project REARC. Uh, same thing with Prebid, uh, who's kind of trying to figure out the, uh, the pipes of identity, the ID, ID pipes of, uh, of the future. Um, and then also is W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium. Um, and our engineers and our engineering team are participating in their weekly meetings, trying to figure out uh, what's happening with the browsers and keeping up uh, with the progress there on things such as Google's flock. Um, the second uh, sort of thing is interoperability. As you've mentioned, there are lots of different uh, ID solutions that are emerging. Uh, you have UID 2.0, you have LiveRAM, you have Google's flock, uh, and there will be more. Uh, there are more and there will continue to be more. Uh, we really think it is important to build a platform that can ingest all of these signals. And so that's what we've done. Uh, the reason really is to meet our customers where they are at. Uh, today, our customers use multiple different data management platforms, DMPs, um, and that's why we support multiple of those. Um, this is not going to be much different than that. We have to meet our customers where we are, uh, where they are at. And then finally, of course, uh, which is at the very heart of who Quantcast is, is innovation. Uh, as you can imagine, being able to take all of these multiple signals in, including the IDs and the cohorts, but also others like contextual, first party, um, consent is becoming more and more important. Um, and then there are many other signals like time, language, geolocation. So all of these signals can help us understand user behavior, intent and interest um, in absence of third party cookies. However, uh, there's, there's something to note about these. They're very raw, they're complex, they're messy, all of these different signals. Um, they are changing all the time, they're real time. Um, and there's incomplete in information isolation. Just one of these signals cannot help you build a true and complete picture. So what you really need uh, is a technology like AI and machine learning to really bring all of these signals together, combine them statistically, and get an understanding of user behavior, intent and interest, and then act on it, be it in terms of providing audience insights um, or responding to bid requests and uh, so on and so forth. So those are sort of the three um, fundamentals that our approach is grounded in, which is industry standards, interoperability, and, and innovation. Uh, and you know, you have Peter here who is, who is yeah. the expert, uh, so he, he can dive much deeper into it. So Peter, CTO, you got to tell us how is this going to actually work? What are you guys doing from a technology standpoint to help with data-driven advertising in a third-party cookie-less world? Well, we've been, um, this is not a shock. You know, I think anyone who's been close to this space has known that the third party cookie has been um, uh, reducing in quality in terms of its pervasiveness and its longevity for many years now. And the kind of death knell is really Google Chrome um, making a, making the changes that they're, they're going to be making. So we've been investing in this space for many years um, and we've had to make a number of hugely diverse investments. So one of them is in how to, as a marketer, how do I tell if my marketing still working in a world without third party cookies? The majority of marketers um, are completely reliant on third party cookies today to tell them if, if their marketing's working or not. And so we've had to 
invest heavily in statistical techniques, which are closer to kind of econometric models that marketers are used to for things like out of home advertising, to kind of establishing whether their advertising is working or not um, in a digital environment. And actually, this, as with often, you know, as is often the case in these kind of times of massive disruption, there's always opportunity to make things better. And we really think that's true. And, and you know, digital measurement has often mistaken precision for accuracy. And, and there's a real opportunity to kind of see the wood for the trees, if you like, and, and start to come up with better methods of measuring the effect of advertising without third party cookies. And we've had to make countless other investments in areas like contextual modeling and, and uh, targeting without third party cookies and, and, and uh, connecting directly to publishers rather than going through this kind of loom escape that's kind of tied together third party cookies. So I could, if I were to enumerate all the investments we've made, I think we'd be here till midnight, but um, we've had to make a number of investments over a number of years and that level of investment's only increasing at the moment. Peter, on that contextual, can you just double click on that and tell, tell us more? Yeah, I mean, contextual is unfortunately one of those things that's really poorly defined. It can mean everything from a publisher saying, hey, trust us, this, this page is about SUVs, to what's possible now and has only really been possible the last couple of years, which is to build statistical models of the entire internet based on the content that people are actually consuming. And this type of technology um, requires massive data processing capabilities. It's able to take advantage of the, of the latest innovations in areas like natural language processing and really gives um, computers a kind of much deeper and richer understanding of the internet, which ultimately makes it possible to kind of organize, um, organize the internet in terms of the types of content of pages. So um, this type of technology has only been possible the last few years, and, but we've been using contextual signals since our inception. It's always been massively predictive in terms of audience behaviors, in terms of where advertising is likely to work. And so we've been very fortunate to keep that investment going. Um, and take advantage of many of these innovations that have happened in academia and in kind of uh, in adjacent areas. On the AI and machine learning aspect, that seems to be a great differentiator in this day and age for getting the most out of the data. How is machine learning and AI factoring into your platform? Uh, I think it's, it's how we've always operated um, right from our inception when we started as a measurement company, the way that we were giving our customers at the time, who were just publishers, uh, just the publisher side of our, our business, um, insights into who their audience was, were, was using machine learning techniques. And that's never really changed. The foundation of our platform has always been, has, has always been machine learning from, from before it was cool. Um, a lot of our kind of, uh, a lot of our core teams have backgrounds in machine learning, you know, PhDs in statistics and, uh, and, and machine learning. And, and that really drives our, our decision-making. I mean, data is only useful if you can make sense of it and if you can organize it and if you can take action on it. And to do that at this kind of scale, it's absolutely necessary to use machine learning technology. So you mentioned contextual also, you know, in advertising, we have everyone knows in that world that you got the contextual and behavioral dynamics, the behavior that's kind of generally, everyone's believing is happening. The consensus is undeniable is that people are wanting to expect an environment where there's trust, there's truth, but also they don't want to be locked in. They don't want to get walled into a walled garden. Um, nobody wants to be in a walled garden. They want to be free to pop around and visit sites. There's more horizontal scalability than ever before, yet the bigger players are becoming walled garden vertical platforms. So with future of AI, the experience is going to come from this data. So the behavior's out there. How do you get that yeah. contextual relevance and provide the horizontal scale that users expect? Yeah, I think it's I think it's a really good point, and we're definitely at this kind of tipping point. We think in, in the broader industry, I think you know every publisher. Right, we're we're really blessed to work with um, the biggest publishers in the world, all the way through to my mum's blog, right. So we get to hear the perspectives of publishers um, at, at every scale, and they they consistently tell us the same thing, which is they want to more directly connect to consumers. They don't want to be tied into these walled gardens, which dictate how they must present their content, and in some cases, what content they're allowed to present. Um, and so, you know, our job as a company is to really provide, level the playing field a little bit, provide them the same capabilities that they're only used to in the wall gardens, but let, give them more choice in, in terms of how they structure their content, how they organize their content, how they organize their audiences, but make sure that they can fund that effectively by making their audiences and their environments discoverable by marketers, measurable by marketers, and connect them as directly as possible to make that kind of ad funded economic model um, as effective in the open internet as it is in social. And so a lot of the investments we've made over recent years have been really to, to kind of realize that vision, which is 
it should be as easy for a marketer to be able to understand people on the open internet as it is in social media. It should be as effective for them to reach people in that environment as really high quality content as it is on Facebook. And so we invest a lot of a lot of our R and D dollars in making that true. And um, we're now live with the Quantcast platform, which does exactly that. And as third party cookies go away, it only um, it only kind of uh, exaggerates or, or kind of further emphasizes the need for direct connections between brands and publishers. And so we just want to build a technology that helps make that true and gives the kind of technology to these marketers and, and publishers to connect and to deliver great experiences without relying on these kind of wall gardens. Yeah, the direct to direct to consumer, direct to audience is a new trend. You're seeing it yeah. everywhere. How do you guys support this new kind of signaling from for for that's happening in this new world? How do you ingest the content and ingest this consent uh, signaling? I mean, we're really fortunate to have an amazing, um, an amazing R and D team, and you know, we've had to do all sorts to make this, you know, to realize our vision. This has meant things like we, you know, we have crawlers which scan the entire internet at this point, extract the content of the pages, and kind of make sense of it and organize it, uh, and organize it for publishers so that they can understand um, how their audiences overlap with potentially their competitors or their collaborators, but more importantly, organize it for marketers. So they can understand what kind of high impact opportunities are there, are, are there for them there. So you know we've had to we've had to build a lot of technology. We've had to build analytics engines which can get answers back in seconds, so that you know marketers and publishers can kind of interact with it with their own data and make sense of it and present it in a way that's compelling and, and help them drive their strategy as well as their execution. We've had to invest in areas like consent management because we believe that a free and open internet is absolutely reliant on trust, and therefore we spend a lot of our time thinking about how do we make it easy for end users to understand who has access to their data and easy for end, end users to be able to opt out. And, uh, and as a result of that, we've now got the world's most widely adopt, uh, adopted consent management platform. So it's hard to tackle one of these problems without tackling all of them. And we're fortunate enough to have had a large enough R&D budget over the last four or five years to make a number of investments, everything from consent and identity through to contextual signals, through to measurement technologies, which really bring advertisers and publishers closer together. Great insight there. Shridi, last word for you is what's the, what's the customer view here as you bring these new capabilities of the platform? Uh, what's, what are you guys seeing as the highlight uh, from a platform perspective? So the, the initial response that we've seen uh, from our customers has been very encouraging, uh, both on the publisher side as well as the marketer side. Um, I think you know one of the things we hear quite a lot is uh, you, you guys are at least putting forth a, a solution, an actual solution for us to test. Uh, Peter mentioned measurement. Uh, that really is where we started because you cannot optimize what you cannot measure. Um, so that, that is where his team has started and we have some measurement, uh, very, very uh, initial capabilities, still in alpha, but they are available in the platform uh, for marketers to test out today. Um, so the initial response has been uh, very encouraging. People want to engage with us. Um, of course, our you know our fundamental value proposition, which is that the Quantcast platform was never built to be reliant on on third party uh, data. These stale segments, like we operate, we've always operated on real time live data. Um, the 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 second thing is is our uh, premium publisher relationships. We have had the privilege of working, like Peter said, with some of the um, biggest publishers, uh, but we also have a very wide footprint. We have first party tags across um, over 100 million plus uh, web and mobile destinations. Um, and, you know, as you must have heard, like that sort of first party footprint is going to come in uh, really handy in, in a world without third party cookies. We are encouraging all of our customers, publishers and marketers to grow their first party data. Um, and so the, that's something uh, that's a strong point that uh, customers love about us and, and lean into it quite a bit. Um, so yeah, the uh, initial response has been great. Uh, of course, it doesn't hurt that we've made all these R&D investments. We can talk about consent. Um, and you know, I often say that consent, it, it, it sounds simple, but it isn't. There's a lot of technology involved, but there's lots of uh, legal uh, work involved as, it, as well. We have a very strong legal team who has expertise uh, built in. So yeah, yeah. Uh, very good response initially. Democratization, everyone's a publisher, everyone's a media company. They have to think about being a platform. You guys provide that. So congratulations, Peter, thanks for dropping the, the gems there. Shruti, thanks for sharing the, uh, the product uh, highlights. Thanks for, for your time. Thank you. Okay, this is the Quantcast Industry Summit on the demise of third-party cookies and what's next, the cookie conundrum, the recipe for success with Quantcast. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE.
Thanks for watching.